Okay, we are going to find some exact values, or maybe it's undefined, for inverse trigonometric functions. Remember that sine is restricted to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 in order to make the function have an inverse, or in order to allow the function to have an inverse, I should say. This is part A is saying that the sine of some angle theta in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 is going to have a value of root 2 over 2. And so in order to calculate this, well, the sine is your y value. So when does a y value have the value of root 2 over 2? That happens for pi over 4. Sine is root 2 over 2 in the second quadrant as well, but that does not fall in the interval negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Part B, we are finding the arc sine, which is the same thing as the inverse of negative 1. This is saying that the sine of some angle is equal to negative 1. When is our y value negative 1? y is negative 1 at 3 pi over 2. But that's not in our interval. We need to go clockwise instead of counterclockwise here, a coterminal angle, which would be for theta equal to negative pi over 2. And it's important to note that we have these inequalities that are including the value. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to evaluate this for b. Part c is saying that the inverse sine is equal to negative 3. That's saying that the sine of some angle is equal to negative 3. But sine only goes from 1 to negative 1. Sine never reaches negative 3 unless you have some sort of amplitude change, which we don't here. So this is undefined. Skills practice 2. We're finding exact values of cosine inverse and tangent inverse. The cosine inverse of negative 1 is saying that the cosine of some angle is equal to negative 1. And remember that cosine is going to be restricted just like sine was restricted, except we are restricting the cosine to 0 to pi. And while we're here, we're going to restrict the tangent from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. But it does not include pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 because of those undefined values. So sine and, and tangent have similar restrictions, except tangent does not include the pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, and sine does. Cosine is a shift and is from 0 to pi. So where is cosine equal to negative 1? Cosine is equal to negative 1 in between the second and the third quadrant, which is at pi. For part b, the inverse tangent of negative root 3 over 3 is saying that the tangent of some angle is equal to negative root 3 over 3. Well, negative root 3 over 3 isn't really any of our ordered pairs on the unit circle, and so you have to do a little bit of investigation here of where do we have root 3's? And it's going to be something where you either have root 3 over 2 as the sine. It's not going to be a pi over 4 because that's square root of 2. So square root of 3 happens with your pi over 6 and pi over 3 values. And this root 3 over 3 screams to me that I rationalized the denominator, which means I had some version of root 3 in the denominator and I had something else in the numerator. So if root 3 is in the denominator, that to me means that I'm going to have some root 3 over 2 and some 1 half here, which would simplify to 1 over root 3 or rationalizing root 3 over 3. I could also have a, a chart where I've listed all the tangent values, but this is some, some number sense that will help you. That being said, the tangent is negative, and so I need either the 1 half to be negative or the, the root 3 over 2 to be negative, but I need to be in the negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 restriction. 
I need my sine value to have the one half fraction, which is when y is one half, which happens at pi over six or 11 pi over six. That's not in the interval, so we would need to find the negative value that's associated with that, so a coterminal angle that's in the range that we need. At pi over six, the x is also positive, and so that's not going to work to give me a negative. So only the 11 pi over six would work, which if I took away 12 pi over six, I would find that negative pi over six is the angle that we would use to find the exact value. Part C, the arc tangent equaling zero is saying tangent of theta is equal to zero for some values. When is tangent of theta equal to zero? On the unit circle, y is zero on the x-axis at the point zero, one, and zero, negative one. But remember, we're on the interval from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, so we're in quadrants one and four. So it's going to be this point right here, which is at either zero or two pi, but to stay in our interval, that's got to be zero. So that's going to be when theta equals zero. Using a calculator to approximate the function values in radians and degrees, make sure that you are calculating with the mode in radians and with the mode in degrees. So I would do three of these. I would do all three of these in one mode, and then I would switch to the other mode. So I'm going to start off with degrees. And in my calculator, I'm going to press the second button and the tangent button, and then I'm going to enter negative 7.92. And for that, I get negative 82.804. For part B, arc cosine is going to be the inverse cosine. So you're going to press the second button, the cosine button, and enter 2 over 7. And you will get 73.398. For part C, you would press the second button and the sine button to get inverse sine, and then you would enter negative 0.81, and you would get negative 54.096. Those are all degrees, so I need a degree symbol. Then I'm going to press the mode button to change my calculator into radians and approach the problem the same way. Just use that button. So for radians, for part A, I get negative one point. Four four five. For part B, I get one point two eight one, and for part C, I get negative zero point nine four four.